If a number equals the sum of its divisors, it's called a perfect number. The first is 6. The most recently discovered perfect numbers are all based on 2 raised to some monstrous power, take away 1. Why look for them at all? If you're the kind of person who enjoys finding a needle in a haystack, or have an affinity with David Hilbert's epitaph, then perhaps you can understand the attraction. Euclid gave us a simple formula to find even perfect numbers, which I'll say more about soon. Perfect numbers are incredibly rare. Hunting for new ones needs terrific computing power. To get a sense of scale, we'll compare orders of magnitude in the physical world with perfect numbers. The diameter of Saturn's rings is an order of magnitude bigger than Earth's diameter. The Sun's diameter is two orders of magnitude bigger than Earth's. And taking things to the limit, 62 orders of magnitude separate the smallest straight length with physical meaning from the largest. There are 51 perfect numbers, starting at 6. Almost 50 million orders of magnitude separate the smallest and largest known perfect numbers. And perfect numbers remain mysterious. I have a feeling there are infinitely many of them, but it could be that every perfect number has already been found. Nobody knows. It all began with Euclid. After Euclid, over 1700 years passed before the fifth perfect number popped up in Germany. Euler contributed something to every part of mathematics. For perfect numbers, he showed that if they're even, they must end in a 6 or 8, which means every perfect number known ends in 6 or 8. Euler also found the eighth perfect number. I mentioned a nice simple formula for even perfect numbers. Euclid recorded its proof 2000 years before Euler was born. So here's the formula in action. If we put the first prime number, 2, into Euclid's formula, it returns the first perfect number, 6. If we put other primes into it, we get more perfects. Notice that 11 isn't one of the primes that generates a perfect number. So, how do we figure out which prime numbers generate perfect numbers? Here are the first 18 prime numbers. And here's what we get when we put these numbers into the first part of Euclid's formula. Only some of the new numbers are prime. And this is the key. Only if 2 to the power of p minus 1 is prime, will the input prime p generate a perfect number using Euclid's formula. Unfortunately, there isn't a formula to tell us which primes will work. You need to trial every prime number. The special primes generated from 2 to the power of p minus 1 are called Mersenne primes, after the French priest and polymath Marin Mersenne, who studied them in the 1600s. Every Mersenne prime is paired with a perfect number through Euclid's formula. Mersenne primes become very sparse very quickly, much faster than the rate that prime numbers themselves become rare. In 1876, Eduard Lucas discovered the largest Mersenne prime that's been found without computers. 76 years passed before Raphael Robinson used an early digital computer to find five further Mersenne primes. These generated five perfect numbers. Since 1996, the whopping computer power needed to find Mersenne Primes has been provided by the Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search, or GIMPs. I've included the link below if you want to help. So far, the search has discovered the 17 largest known Mersennes. Here's the largest yet found, making it only the 51st Mersenne Prime known. It's also the largest known prime number. Euclid wrote a beautiful proof that there is no end to the prime numbers. If you're feeling inspired, perhaps you could follow in Euclid's footsteps. No one has yet proved whether or not the perfect numbers ever end.
Also, no one has ever found an odd perfect number, but no one has ever been able to prove that they don't exist. Perhaps you could be the one. Our observable universe appears to be gigantic. But perfect numbers remind us that the orders of magnitude involved in shaping its entire physical scale are actually rather small. Of course, our universe may be much bigger than the one our observations are confined to by the speed of light. Our minds can envisage this bigger universe and cosmological models and evidence imply it's there. The unseen universe could dwarf the orders of magnitude of perfect numbers or even be infinite. But like the missing proofs in perfect numbers, the non-observable universe's size is a question that awaits a definite answer.